Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the morning edition. Of the Safety Third Podcast, Japan edition. Before we start, I would like to apologize to Kevin for sneezing on him last night. I'm only kind of <laughs> sick now. Also, we lost Nigel. We don't know where he went, but we have Charlie he died. now. Nigel yeah, died. Nigel died. a robot now, so that's cool. You know when you're like... You you like there's that the panic before you like how you have to sneeze and your brain's not working great because you're just trying to figure something out. I was trying to uh, put my mask on, and and it I wasn't fast enough, and I sneezed on Kevin. But also, you sneeze in the mask if you have to sneeze and you're wearing a mask. Because I don't. That's just I can't. I, I t- usually take it off, which you're probably not supposed to do. I mean, it do. sounds like the but exact then, opposite of why you wear a but mask. But then nobody wants to sneeze in their mask. <laughs> you can try again. <laughs> Nigel do be looking pretty small. Is that, is that gum? He might, yeah, I just chewed the gum. He finally has a heart. <laughs> Johnny has Gundam arms now. <laughs> They're attached on with gum. (laughs) Sit. God, this thing is so. There we go. (laughs) Can we give him the sword? I don't know if the gum will support it. Here, uh, this is the hand that has the sword. It it barely supports it. Actually, I really don't want to touch it. (laughs) Ew, you got your gum all over his torso. No, 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 wait, wait, I have an idea. Yeah, well, hold on, hold on. No, no, okay. I want to execute my idea. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where, the, that's where the gun goes, right? Yeah, yeah, he needs a gun head. He needs a gun head. Ew, I touched the gum! This is our robot, Chadi. He's a very, 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 Chari. very crappy robot. <laughs> Isn't that, that right, Chadi? No, let him fall. Let him fall. <laughs> He's thinking about it. <laughs> Don't worry, we have no idea what he's saying either. So what? What is Charlie? How? Because I didn't. I never got to play with Charlie. <laughs> Will and Alan have some kind of backstory with Charlie. Did we already talk about I this? I think this might be the worst podcast on the internet. <laughs> Slowly sliding down his body. I like, like Charlie. A slug. <laughs> like a slug crawling down a wall. <laughs> it's our last full day in Japan, and uh, we need to talk about the things that we've done. So we're gonna take you on a trip, a journey of of uh, external discovery, because it's uh, our journey, and, not yours, and, in, and internal. I don't. I don't know what we're supposed to talk about because we we have this this stupid robot. But if this podcast comes out before the video with the stupid <laughs> robot, it's not going to make any sense. What are the chances that we get our our challenge video out? You think we could get it before this podcast? So if we're able to finish editing the video that we filmed with this stupid robot, then this will make a lot more sense. But basically, Charlie is an emotional support robot, <laughs> and we did a challenge where we received him to help us with the challenge without realizing that he was actually completely useless for the challenge. Yeah, we were trying to get the biggest boobs up the highest place that we possibly could. So there were two teams. It was me and Alan versus Nigel and Kevin. Yeah. And we were competing to do what Alan just said. Biggest boobs, tallest location. Yeah, and then I don't... Do we have to censor this if it's it in was, the bag? It was called the OP. OP up high. Is it is it clear that it's a torso, human torso in a garbage bag without <laughs> getting too much into what it looks like? How clear is it? It's pretty blurred. It's, it's pretty, pretty blurred. Okay. Oh, okay. We can, really? Hey, look at that. Perfect. Anyway. So just use your imaginations for what's in that garbage bag. <laughs> it's, an, it's, a, it's a special effect. <laughs> practical no, practical effect. Um, so long story short, we did a challenge in Japan where we had to buy something and take it somewhere tall. And Alan and I lost the initial con- competition, which was what guessing how tall the sky tree was. Yeah, yeah. Like the tallest building in Tokyo. Is it the tallest? Yeah, I think, I think so. we said it was something like six thousand like, meters. Yeah, tall. like two thousand kilometers or something like that. And uh, so our prize for losing that was a guide robot, which turned out to be an emotional support robot. So we spent half of our time trying to get the damn robot to work <laughs> until we realized that it actually was not helpful. And then um, 
Now we. Now he's cool. Now, now he's now cool. You're stuck. He didn't look nearly as cool before. But we also didn't have arms until just now. <laughs> I can't believe how well the sword fits right into his nose. <laughs> the looks people gave us though when we were running around with this robot it was not good not, not good luck no like no maps no nothing we had to figure out where to go where to buy something how to get really high and we asked people questions it was a total disaster did you ask how do i get high no we didn't did you ask it no that but i just no. we just we asked some poor japanese woman to please speak english <laughs> Right, so we're going, we're, we're, we realize at this point that the robot's not helping us at all. And I think we were like 20 or 30 minutes in. And we go down into the subway because we know that we have to get to a city or the town or what, what the district over. Yeah, yeah. Because that's where they sell the biggest booba. And so I pull out my phone. I've got Google Translate open. But the previous thing I had on Google Translate was please speak English because I was trying to figure out if I could get this robot to speak English, which... Uh, spoilers he does not speak Doesn't english speak english so I, I whip out my phone and we're like asking this woman for help and it literally it's like i'm presenting her a phone that says please speak <laughs> english <laughs> and she she literally she immediately just starts laughing at us <laughs> which we deserved that's like the green text on 4chan the classic one where they're playing soccer and the kid nails the other kid in the head with a soccer ball and he means to say i'm so sorry and are you okay but he says are you sorry? Are, are you sorry? Yeah. Are you sorry? Are you sorry? sorry? Are you sorry? <laughs> I feel like we've thoroughly embarrassed ourselves here Wait, in Japan. I just realized we're sitting from the darkest yellow to the lightest yellow. Are we actually? Yeah. That. Oh, look at that. Is. That's... <laughs> <laughs> do you want to? You want to? You want to say? I feel like that's inappropriate in all languages. <laughs> 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 I just like how our this is the first time that we've had a garbage bag with a human torso in it as a guest on the it's podcast. It's Nigel. <laughs> he pissed the Yakuza off. <laughs> <laughs> they cut him up and gave him boobs. <laughs> is it hot in here or am I just saying stupid things? So it turns out that Nigel and I took the challenge way too seriously, apparently. Yes, yes and that's I mean, why you, you lost. You did exactly... No, you guys did exactly what you needed to do. You just didn't show up on time because you would have we won. We took the train up a stop instead of down a stop. And then everybody acted like they were so surprised when when we got lost <laughs> because all we had is a map to get around. You didn't even try to communicate that you guys were lost, though. No, because how could... You are supposed to be there at two. Well, we knew... We knew we were supposed to be there at one. See, this is you trying to trick me. It was oh, one, yeah, it was uh, one. one. one yeah, one. yeah, because you had the podcast at yeah. one. And but, I guess we, we actually uh, also just through sheer dumb luck were in the place we were supposed to be at the right time. We don't even know what time yeah, that was supposed to be. So Nigel and I, we ran out of the park, like straight down into the subway, and we forgot to check what station we got on and what park we were at. Right. So, so we were looking at a map of Japan and we had a map. It was like actually like the entire island of Japan. And we're like, okay, we're in Tokyo. Now, which park is it? And there's about a million parks in Tokyo. Well, it's Ueno because it's the shady, shady part uh, of town, scary part. apparently. See, we went to the Imperial Gardens and we're like, I don't remember this park having a moat around it, but there we are standing with our thing. I, it made me realize that GPS and Google Maps are some of the greatest inventions ever made. Like... Seriously, being able to just type something in and it tells you where to go is like not having that is mm. honestly scary. Yes. Thank like, you, US Army, for the GPS. And Russia, because they shot I read about they shot down a plane or something like that. What? Yeah, Russia shot down a passenger plane in the eighties. And that was and that what? was a big catalyst for releasing I, GPS because they the they 2000s. drifted off the plane. Ah, I see, I see. I which see. which plane which passenger plane was it that Russia shot down specifically? Because uh there's been multiple. Yeah, and they were like, oh, we actually have everything you would ever possibly need for this to not happen. Yeah, exactly. And so then they released it, and then that now you can, you know, figure out exactly where they sell whatever's in that bag. Yep. <laughs> just, uh, somehow, somehow the not being able to see it clearly makes it that much worse. It's almost like now you've got to imagine what's in there. Did, here's, here's a little fact. Yeah. Japan doesn't use gps they don't they don't they use their own system they have what's their own system the phone that i just i just bought like a cheap phone and it says that it uses the japanese navigation system satellites hmm. 
instead of it uses, I don't know, it uses four different types. It's of, accurate within a half a mile. There, there's not just GPS. There's like four or five different like global positioning mm. networks all across the globe. Do the phones use all of them or you just use one of them? No, usually the phones have all the chips in them. Okay, Just cool. in case you're traveling. Yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? This is this is sort of the last... The, the last, last hurrah? Yeah. So it's, I mean, we've been here for what, two weeks, three weeks? What do you think? How do we of, sell of Japan? Place? Yeah. I think that Japan is... Okay, so... We did. Tokyo is Tokyo feels like it's in the future. Not that far in the future, but a couple it, days. It definitely feels like they're living. Well, technically they are, right? They're actually actually yeah. We are <laughs> yeah. we are almost an entire Eleven, day in the future. Eleven actually. hours for me. <laughs> we went to the countryside with PewDiePie yesterday to go off roading, and when you go into the countryside, it feels like. 50 years in the past and then Tokyo oh, yeah. feels like 50 years in the future. And there's nothing in between. There's, there is no transition. It is just really old. To rice patties. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like the oh, instant yeah, yeah. you leave like, it, it's, it's rice patties. Exactly. It's completely filled with farming area. Like it's, it's just a total night and day difference. And it's not even out. like the giga farms that you see driving across America no. too. It's like a little, it's like a yes. house on like a little acre of farmland. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird. Like you don't see anything yeah. like that. You, like in the states, you'd normally see almost like a like a small transition acres. into countryside, city, right? Yeah. Yeah. Suburb, city, suburb, and then it would just like gradually become like less more dense. Rural, yeah. But it was almost like there was almost like a line somewhere yeah. as we were driving where it just stopped. Farms. <laughs> but we got to go off roading yesterday, uh, and that was dope. Have you yeah, ever done that was that? cool. I had never been off roading before, and it it exhausted me in ways I didn't know my body was capable of being exhausted by. It was terrifying. I mean, I've done it before, but this was different. It was like a course. I've never yeah. had a workout driving before. Yeah. So it was a it was like a competition course, like a private course, like a technical off road challenge. Yeah. And so everything is built to just be like like hard enough, but like safe enough. Yeah. Cause it's, it's outdoors, but it's like, there's like, they've built structures that you have to like kind of drive over. Yes. And there's like, there's like kind of artificial Hills and like little, like, like, like a V shaped log thing. You yeah. Have to drive down. If you're, if you're off by a little bit with your tires, the car just kind of like almost, the car would over. actually like just, yeah, go on exactly side. Side. yeah. you have yeah. to drive right down the middle correctly or you die. Yeah. It's like a bunch of telephone poles stuck into the ground in like a V shape. And you have to like the edge of the tire is like riding on the V. And so if you shift a little bit, the car really starts to, it was, uh, it's like a, almost like a, like a parkour course but yes. for cars. Car core. Yeah. Par- car core. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I, it was not safe. Like you could definitely <laughs> flip your car there. Well, they do. They have. Yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what's the fun if you can't destroy your car? Well, it was their car. What's the fun if you can't destroy someone else's car? That makes it way better. Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Can you say that Felix wrecked his car? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. It was. His brand new car. He took it off roading. (laughs) And, like, within a couple hours, it just was, like, missing a bumper and had a giant dent in the back. No, his wasn't missing the bumper. He ripped someone else's bumper. But his was also, like, part of the back bumper got. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 Going down the V wrong. The the freaking. It exited and it crushed on the right side. Yeah, that was great. That was fun. <laughs> I re- that's, the, that's like the kind of car you like. It's it's like if, I feel like if that didn't happen to that kind of what Land Rover, you're yeah. not using it right. What's interesting, Land Rover you know, and Land Cruiser. Land, Land Rover is a brand. Land Cruiser is Toy- a Toyota model. Oh, it was a Land Cruiser. Yeah. Land Cruiser. So he had a Land like a Toyota Land Cruiser that was modified to look like an older Land Cruiser. Right. Mm. It still kicked ass though. Yeah. I was impressed. Oh yeah, Land Cruiser is like. The nice Toyota off-road vehicle. Uh, it's like the fancy. It's like the, the fancier one. The Range Rover of Land Rovers. Do you guys ever see my old car? S- smaller truck, my bigger wheels. Car. No, I what never saw the, the eighty-five Toyota pickup. No, no, I don't think I've ever actually seen. Oh, used to, my my dad. We had two of them, and it's like the old small trucks, which I wish they still had, but I think the EPA killed them. Um, it's like a half ton that was mm. four four wheel drive, had a lock differential and had big old tires on it that thing could go anywhere it was amazing hmm what I, did you what, what did you actually like take it off roading and stuff i i didn't too much because it was my dad's and i didn't you know it's not really like also like if you go off roading you're gonna break the car yeah you're going yeah. to break yes. the car yeah you, like that's half of it it's like you kind gonna, of have to break it so you yeah. just don't feel bad about scratching right. it up and so it's like <laughs> i'm i was just a college student i was driving the extra car we had because my sister couldn't drive stick shift and then my dad sold it. it's a whole thing um but basically i was driving like the only car that that wasn't uh um that no one else could drive, or yeah. my dad could drive. but i basically 
drove it to school and back. Wasn't a great car. Never off-roaded it. It just was a car that I had to drive. Did a mm. tiny bit of off-roading, but not too much. But it's fun. You can just climb over things that you would never be able to climb yeah, over. Yeah, it's a bizarre. They, they look like when, when you're going over like the rocks and stuff, because me and Kevin were like watching from a high tower at one point, it looks like a little toy car. Yeah. Yeah. Like the amount the wheels can actually move. And like yeah. how much it was bouncing around yeah. and just climbing over stuff. You wouldn't yeah. think that like a full-size vehicle could like do that sort of thing. Have it's you taken nice. your Prius off-roading? Uh, yeah. Yes, I think... Well, my Prius C, I think, could do that obstacle course exactly once, and then it would never do anything ever again. <laughs> you definitely could get over some of that stuff. Yeah, that that one really steep hill where you're, like, driving into the sky, I don't know if it could make it. I don't oh. think you can make it up there. I think you'd have trouble on the bouncy rocks because it's, you're just, you don't oh, have Oh, I think, yeah, in. the bottom of the car would actually yeah. just be I ruined. think you could do the V, though, the V. The V in the yeah, Prius. Yeah, I think you could do the V in the Prius, yeah. You might just be riding on your rims, yeah, like the outside of your rims. But, but you, you could, do, could it. do it. You could you do could the lifted do one too, like the side log. So there's one where you drive the car and you get up on like a um, a concrete block, and so the car is at like a 35 degree angle. Yeah, yeah, That's you could scary. probably do that with the Prius C. I think you could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be ripping the bumper off and stuff, but that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, like the car, it it's at this point, it's like over 10 years old, and it's like <laughs> last hurrah. We we've like we with your with your shag and wagon and the Prius C, like we've done bits before for yeah. videos where it's like we kind of <laughs> yeah. just bang them into each other yeah. a little bit just because it's funny. It is. <laughs> it's also fun. <laughs> you can turn the shag and wagon into a battle shag and wagon. I, I for the longest time have wanted to like jack it up. Yeah, that would be so cool. Put some big wheels on it. I don't think it's really totally doable. Like I think those sorts of cars, like the unibodies, are not. Oh yeah, great. and maybe like the the way that how far the nose sticks out, and the yeah, back sticks out. You're just gonna rip them both. I feel like off. it's like it's one of those things where it would take you months of work. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just like I don't want I don't I don't want to do that. Sounds like something whistling diesel would do. Yeah, actually the whole day felt like a whistling, whistling diesel. diesel. Like, like like a video yeah like a whistling diesel fever dream i mean what, diesel. what were those guys they had their own like off-roading group it was like a company that like retrofits the cars retrofits the cars yeah. and it was almost like they kind of invited felix out to just kind of like dick around right and they got yeah to promote basically yeah, yeah yeah but it was like they were they were genuinely like 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 so kind of like nice and welcoming and they did the yeah. thing that you kind of always wish that like a company would when they're trying to work with you yeah which is like they weren't like it didn't it didn't ever feel like slimy. It didn't ever feel like no. they were trying to like extract value from us. They were actually fun. giving value. Yeah, yeah. they're giving you an experience. They were like they just wanted you to have fun. Yeah, I actually I really appreciate that. A lot of people like you get you get emails all the time, people just saying, like, Oh, we want you to do this, we want mm -hmm. you to do that. And and a lot of times when you do work with people, they just they try to like take stuff. It was like the the one time where was it? Were we in Florida where like we got oh invited to God. see like a quadcopter factory oh, or something? God. And we showed up thinking that we were going to get like a cool we're tour hang and out play with and... quadcopters. And then somehow we ended up on like one of their live streams and they started asking us for oh, video that, ideas. Yes, I remember. We just okay. get, they hated us at the end of that. <laughs> I think at one point on the live stream, I like started trying to eat the quad coffee because I was like, is this edible? How edible are your quad coffees? I just started biting into it. That was so frustrating. <laughs> like, he stuck us in like this little box and had us yeah. review some quad coffees. He's like, like, like just trying to like leech clout. And the whole time we never, we, we didn't play with a single quad copter when no, we were there. No, 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 <laughs> I, no. Yeah, I think I think that if you're ever around us and we start becoming very like obtuse and chaotic and uh, I, I don't know, how would you describe it? Uh, it's like uh, when you go to the doctor's office and they hit your knee with a hammer and you do that. And you like, yeah, you, you're like very sarcastic. The more sarcastic <laughs> I think we get, it means that we are, uh, I don't know the word. Um, <laughs> getting pushed to getting, the limit. <laughs> yeah, like frustrated where it's like we're not gonna i'm not gonna be a jerk but i'm also not gonna give you what you want <laughs> it's like how you wish you could respond to your teachers in high school yes i guess i did that then i get in trouble yeah yeah, yeah, smart yeah. Ass. but so i mean that they like you know we had like a really good day out on their on their off-road track and they like yeah. made us like an actual like really oh, good man, those guys are awesome like grilled lunch fresh yakisoba oh. egg yeah candy, so good it was extremely good and the whole time it just like they they never ever it never felt like they were asking too much it was like a 12 course lunch too like they just kept coming out with more yeah. and more food it was awesome. That's why if you are a brand and you work with creators don't try to weasel them just give them a cool opportunity it's like 
it's like getting your friends to work in exchange for food you know like mm-hmm. the food motivator yeah like if you just give somebody a cool opportunity it'll naturally turn into like a product yeah it'll placement. be better for you and probably cheaper <laughs> don't have them stand there like I don't know. Eating, I, eating quadcopters I, and reading yeah. them on taste. It reminds me uh, <laughs> when we were at Creator Clash, um, the boxing event. Michael's mm-hmm. in the staging room before he went right, out for his right, fight, yeah. and the production team is like, you know, they're doing what they do, like the mm-hmm. live stream. They're like, okay, now, like, we want you to do like the, the shadow boxing where you're sort of like punching there, so it gets intimidating, kind of sets the fight up with the two different people in, in each room that are preparing to go onto the arena. And uh, Michael's like, can I do it in the bathroom? And they were like, um, yeah, maybe, but like, we'll do one, do one in the bathroom and then we'll do one outside just to mm. be safe, just in case. And it's like, if you give production teams the choice, they usually almost always choose the clean they one. The bad one. And yeah. so I'm like, Michael, punch really, really, like just sort of like. <laughs> and so he did that. And then guess what? They didn't use that one. <laughs> he forced them to use the, the, bathroom the one, one reason the bathroom yeah. punching the air. <laughs> I don't know. I really, it, I value that experience. It was fun. It was like a really cool opportunity. Those yeah. guys are very cool. They clearly are just super into off-roading. Uh, they let they let us basically do everything. They were like pushing, you know, like Felix to to push his car. Yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> there's I dings think, and dents and the bumpers ripped off. I but. feel like he kind of has some animosity towards me. Why? In a way, because I said, oh, let's go through the mud. And then I, <laughs> well, then I pointed. Content. And then I'm like, hey, can we go through the mud? And the guy's like. So so he winds up and he goes into the mud and, and we just so like immediately like the truck goes like three feet into down the into the just wet yeah. swampy no way it's ever coming out mud. Yeah, you look at the top <laughs> of that mud before we went in it, you would not have guessed <laughs> how deep, how deep it, was. it was. Felix just turns around and he's kind of like. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't do this stuff though. <laughs> I feel like and if I'm like, you're... no, no, this is the authentic off-roading experience. <laughs> trust me. I think I think a lot of people. I I don't know. I feel like we look at stuff, or at least I look at stuff differently. Like if yeah. I make something and I know how to like fix it or change it or whatever, I almost mm. I'm I'm so much more willing to like disrespect it and break it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because it's like I'll just you know fix it. Or make another one. Yeah, that's how you learn. You know, and you, you can't learn your car's limits until you get stuck in three feet. I mean, the only thing I say about a car is it's a lot more work to fix it. But that, I think, is generally the sport of off-roading is pushing yeah. the car to the limit. And then, you know, obviously Having dealing with the Having to pull your friends crunches. out of the mud. Yeah, or <laughs> fix stuff. Like, if you tried to drag someone out of, you know, off the side of the road and you rip their bumper off, they'd be freaking out a lot more than a person who off-roads getting their bumper ripped off because it's just yeah. like a part of it like mm. yeah it's not surprising and you're like wow i thought that bumper was supposed to be stronger okay yeah. <laughs> next time i'll put three bolts in it so i definitely can understand why somebody would be freaked out when they rip somebody's bumper off <laughs> and then the said bumper big metal bumper Javelin. comes fly javelins back <laughs> at your car and puts a huge dent in the back side of it i mean i wish we, we don't have that they have it that's on video. felix's fault i want to hear the, the thunk it made when it put that dent in the back of his car that was the first time I've ever seen a, a toe or a pole like that go wrong, though. Huh. It's because he wound up. He like he went five feet oh, back. Oh yeah, and he yeah, and then the he gas. went. <laughs> How's he supposed to get the car out? You're supposed to like. No way. Li- little, no, even we did it the other way. Like a rocket. Yeah, but it was not working at all. No, but that's just because we were trying to pull it deeper into the mud. Yeah, but even we did backwards, we couldn't get it out. It was it was a bit. That's of, true. Yeah. Well, what you're supposed to do if you pull something out, like you, yeah, you can do a big pull like that. Not like a really big pull, but you're supposed to put like a spare tire or something in the middle of the toe strap. Mm. So oh, whatever yeah, you're yeah. holding, if it rips off, it's, it doesn't yeah. like slingshot. And but then how would you get like an that. awesome, cool, big dent in the back of your car? Uh, the, I think the toe straps are designed for this, though, so it's not so big. Like, <laughs> yeah. like if you, I think what chain with the videos of people trying to drag like a bush out of a car with chain, like it kills yeah. people. Like the chain is elastic. Like, you know, the metal is elastic. So it starts stretching. So as the car is like pulling and the object is resisting, the chain is like stretching. Yeah. And then when it breaks, that stretching now has a lot less weight attached to the end of it. <laughs> and so it just comes careening forward and it kills people. Like people hundred yes. percent do die when the like <laughs> non a couple of times every year. People die yeah. from that. But I think toe straps are not, they don't, they're not as elastic, they're so they don't gonna, stretch like, as much. They're pull the part off yeah. the car as fast as you were going. They don't the store as much energy. Yeah. Like, I think that's half half of the point of a toe strap is it's a very, 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 very stiff material. But you should always put strap. like your floor mats or your, like a spare tire, put the toe strap through it or put the to- uh, the mats on it just in case something bad happens. Right, right. 
That's actually <laughs> toe straps contain such a good pro tip. I remember you saying that to me literally moments before the exact yeah. thing happened, which is the reason why you should do that. Because we were saying you're like, oh, that's funny. Usually you have to put like a spare tire on that. I was like, oh, and then, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I think if it's not a toe strap, you probably shouldn't do it at all. I don't yeah. know. I don't think you really need it. I mean, you probably if you, maybe the best situation. I think it can still. So here, toe strap contain little to no elasticity, making them perfect for towing vehicles. Due to the lack of give in a toe strap, they should not be used for yanking a stuck vehicle out of whatever it's stuck in. Well, shit. Well, <laughs> even though toe straps should not be used for aggressive tugging, they still have a place in recovery. So I think that if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're off-roading and you have a toe strap and you do it what we did because you had no other option, eh. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Is there a better way? Yeah. Everybody's, but everybody's going to say don't do it, and everybody has done it. Yeah, they're going to say don't do it, and the reason they know that is because they were in a situation yeah. where it was like, what are you going to do, call somebody? Are you going to call a helicopter out to lift you out of the dirt? No. Yeah, I, I really can't imagine like sort of how like we would have ever done something like that without like being invited to do it, you know, like, like oh, yeah. trying to set up a whole day like that. It's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. I feel, I feel very, I'm, I'm glad that we've had like a lot of things like that here so far. Oh where my it's God. Just, like, sort yeah. of like almost not even, it's not, not so much that's like once in a lifetime. It's not even about like statistics, just like things that you just normally would not be able to do. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Cause I think that like there's things you could do in your hometown because you know people your friends do something mm -hmm. and like there's no way to gain access to those experiences right right and that's what happened yesterday it was like you know felix you know made acquaintances with these guys which then gave us access to this off-roading club yeah. that I, how many people even know of its existence that don't right. live in, in not even in tokyo yeah, but two, like outside of like tokyo two hour drive yes. outside of tokyo um or like uh are we allowed to talk about like the the like the patreon extra challenges like the yeah which the one? wasabi thing yeah yeah yeah. because like that's that's also something like we we did like sort of this this challenge where we had to we had to eat really nice sushi but one of oh, the really michelin, nice sushi michelin star what michelin star recognized or actually he, michelin he star? was a michelin Michelin, Michelin star, star chef. chef and his restaurant got demolished by the like property by the owner. michelin man <laughs> He took it back. He took the star back. <laughs> he was mad. But it's like, like you know, that's that's something you you would never even like. When do you mm. get to do a wasabi roulette with a Michelin star chef? That's not even something you no. could kind of like do, like just run into yeah. by happenstance, right. you know. But we got to do it as like a surprise. Yeah. He hated it though. He's like he felt so bad that he was destroying defiling his food. His food. Yeah, yeah, and he felt bad for us too because it was a lot of wasabi. Someone kept pushing for him to add more and more and more wasabi until we couldn't take it anymore. I'm looking at Ian off screen, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous laughter. <laughs> no, I actually really liked it. I think, it, like, my favorite part was just trying to pretend that it didn't affect me. It was just having it slowly, clearly affect me. <laughs> it did. It was not it's great. Like, it's okay. <laughs> it everything hurts. <laughs> Yeah, we've done so much stuff here. I'm like, my I'm like fried. It's like every single day. Mm -hmm. It does not mm -hmm. stop. Yeah, was, we were like eight hours yesterday. We I the, the crazy yeah. thing is, is we, it's so much, so much walking. It's like what twenty thousand. Yeah. Like at one point, we record like 20, thirty thousand steps. Did we actually multiple twenty thousand day steps? Yeah, yeah. and 20, I thousand step days. I swear to God, I am still gaining weight because we've been eating so much. I'm stuff. curious if I've gotten. <laughs> I weighed myself, and I where do you I find the scale? I lost weight. It's in the bathroom. You lost. There's a scale here. Yeah. What? Yeah, upstairs oh, wait, bathroom. I'm wait, gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. You're get going the right now. No, not the bathroom. Wait. The like, Hannah, wait, let's the go. other room, the shower room. Can you get it? Okay, okay. So we can find out if we right. gained weight and how much. The scale is tiny. God. It, oh shit! It says air. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Are you sure this is a, a scale for uh, adult gaijin? Here, push the button to reset it. Uh, eighty-five kilograms. How much is 85 kilograms in American? 187 pounds. Whoa! 187? Is that more? That's more. How much you gain? I don't know, like five pounds. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm scared. I'm really scared. Fuck. All right, wait, how does this work? You you step on it. Oh, no. It's not turning on. I think it, the it's, on had, the bottom? it's had enough. God, oh, how did push. this happen? Wait, wait for it to zero. Yeah, I see. Okay. Oh, fucking Christ.
96 kilograms. 211 pounds. Holy Christ, I also gained a lot of weight. That's easily like six, seven pounds. I'm usually like 60. Oh my nine. God. <laughs> we, no. sh we should not have done this. No. Why did we do this? Oh no, okay. So oh, I'm, no. I'm 70. So I've won like two pounds. You gained two pounds? Yeah. Oh that's my. 154, that's regular. 154. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's regular. <laughs> <laughs> uh. God, no. I was in Australia in 2019, the beginning of 20 or the end of 2019, and and you know to the hospital, and I got on the scale at the hospital, and I was like, oh, I think the scale's broken, or I was doing the conversion wrong, and that's when I realized that I had gained weight. This is a very similar moment, and I don't. Uh, yeah, wow. I cannot. It just it feels like when you walk that much, you couldn't possibly gain weight. <laughs> That's what I've been telling myself. Unless, unless you eat uh, much more than normally and more more than enough to offset the activity. I was confident that I would lose weight. <laughs> I was like, I actually was 100% certain. I was like, there's no way walking this much. I mean, Japanese people tend to be very thin and we were living their life. We clearly weren't living their lifestyle. Whatever we were doing is not what they're doing what here. What were we doing wrong? Was it the beer or the food? Or the, maybe the beer and the food. Might have been entirely too much food, yeah. I don't know. I've had fun, though. I would come back. I definitely really wanted to come back to Japan since oh, yeah. last time we were here. I extended my stay. We figured out oh, yeah. that the, the Trash Taste producer had, like, a spare room. And mm -hmm. so I actually I put my flight out for, like, five yeah. more days. We've done a lot of coin pushers. Yes. Metaru. Coin pusher. So if you guys haven't heard, <laughs> there's this thing called coin pushers. AKA medals. Medals. I don't think that's what they're actually called, but that's what we call them. <laughs> it, it's a thing. That's is what it? They yeah, it's called medals. Like with the D as in like a... Medals. Yeah, because yeah. those are the things, the, the tokens, they're the medals. You may have played coin pushers at like a Chuck E. Cheese or Dave & Buster's, but mm -hmm. these are the greatest coin pushers <laughs> I have ever seen. They might actually have some of these in the States, but I've never seen them. There's like a thousand things going on at the same time. I don't understand any of it. And, and and you can't win prizes, you don't win money, it's not even gambling, you just, you lose your money, and it's like a very healthy relationship. It's like, I understand the machine's goal, I understand what I'm here for. It's here to extract metals it, from it me. It takes my money, I know it's gonna take my money, there's no possibility of me, me getting anything lights. in return, except just stimulation, and I love it. Yeah, I think this is this is this was a blog post that I found where we were looking for where the medals were in Japan. Okay, and this is probably the most accurate. Like it's just, it, it's perfect. It's perfect. So what they say is, uh, all you need to do at any of these games is insert medals, watch the show, and wait for the result. What do you do with the medals you get when you win? Nothing. You can play longer and you can save your medal balance for another day, but that's it. That's the existential beauty of it. There are no prizes and no stakes. Just gambling, the chance to gamble again, and the inevitability of ruin. It's <laughs> relaxing. It, once you know what your fate is, <laughs> you can finally be at ease. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of pressure that gets taken off knowing you can't yes. win. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you just, it's like the faster you shove them in, the faster you lose. <laughs> You're gonna lose. Yes. Yeah. You yes. literally can't. So you want to prolong it. Like, yeah. I think the way we figured it cuts. out, because yeah. you'd think that at a certain point, if the machine gets saturated with metals, you would get one in, one out. But I yeah, think I've what we figured that. out. I've tried putting them in as fast as I can. I think most of them have a mechanic worse. where you know the the holes. Yeah. Where the coins fall into and like gives you, get you a like slot a, run. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how they make sure that's always a negative return. Because that way, like, the yeah. coins don't always get sent back to you. Some of them escape the system. I think they also don't give you one medal in return for a medal. No way. You think, it, you think there's, like, a I deficit? Like a one to one. How like would a 1.9 return? 1 1.1. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the house always wins. No yeah, yeah. I, really, I mean, they could. They could. It, like, makes me want to get one and <laughs> just sit there all day. Or maybe get one that you just, like automatically feed coins into and just watch it and just watch it you ever <laughs> like a lava lamp yeah i remember you ever uh play super smash bros and just set all the oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah like 99 yeah. stock and you yes. just have them go at it yeah it's like background you, you noise put all of the crazy stuff on like all the items oh too. shut up oh my god chotty he's got something to input here what set him off 
Thank you. Oh my god, Thanks, now he's Charlie. listening again. He's gonna listen to whatever we're saying. He's gonna keep going until we're just quiet for thirty seconds. Thank you. Thank he you, Charlie. Bean sprouts, and then he said, "I've been waiting for you." And then he said, "Don't overdo it," which I think is good advice. Thank you, Charlie, <laughs> for your absolutely useless advice. <laughs> Bean Feel sprouts. free to chime in I've whenever you want. I've been waiting for you. Is that a haiku? <laughs> <laughs> don't overdo it. <laughs> D- don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. That's five. Okay. I think, you know when you go to an arcade, like, so last time I went to the, an arcade in the States, I played Coin Pushers. It was like a Wizard of Oz themed one. Mm. I feel like we've talked about this a little bit. Oh, wait. Maybe? I, I did one with Nigel at, the, at David yes. Buster's as Wizard. Oh, my yes. God. I, yes. I have a okay. story yes. about yes. that. Yes. Yes. I have a story about that. Wait, which that. one is this? So, the it, Wizard of Oz one? The Wizard, Wizard of Oz, Oz Coin Pusher so David the, Buster. So, the way it works because we've played the exact same, mm-hmm. I think, mechanism, is there's coins and cards. Because yes. sometimes they just they stick random shit into the coin pushers as well. If you collect all seven cards, you can redeem like 3,000 tickets. Yes. And so we, when I was playing last time, I had six cards and a bunch of duplicates of the six. And I was like, all I need is this stupid dog, Toto. Or as I call Are him, crap, sure this crap. isn't my story? Did you, no, the we, exact we, same we thing have happened? lived through this same exact thing. same yeah. thing. Okay. So yes. you can get six cards very easily. And I walked around the machine several times, like really searching for it and realized that none of them had the damn dog mm-hmm. because the game, it's like, it's like, it's a sham. They, they tell you, they make you think that if you collect all the cards, leave me alone. So you can't see which card like face down. No, 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 no. You, you can, can see, see them. You can see them. But they only inject the six of them into the machine. And that one Toto gets sporadically shoved in so the only card worth anything is toto yeah so it's, so it's like, like when you get one card it shoots another one in no it's just like random i okay. don't know but it's like does that make sense like the, the other cards mean nothing the real win yeah. is getting the dog yeah. so you don't even need to collect them all all you need is the damn dog yeah that's the hard yeah. to get card because everything else is super easy yes yeah. so it was did, was there anything else that happened no Okay. So all, all I did is I confronted the I confronted the manager and I said, "I have I yeah, have yours a is, yours is a little better, yeah." Okay, because I was in a very similar situation where you easily win all the other cards except for Toto, the damn dog. <laughs> and um, what happened was I was looking around all the machines. There was another woman who was playing, and she was you know she was getting cards as well. And I had gotten to the point where I actually had so many duplicates. I had like two yeah. or three of every. There's like six cards. That means I had what I'm a twenty or thirty cards, yeah. except for Toto. Yes, I had amassed a massive amount of cards. And looking around the machines, I saw there was one Toto in one of the machines. And the woman sitting, and the woman was sitting at that machine because she knew. Well, here's the thing. I went up to her, just trying to kind of casually, you know, see if I could kick her off, right? Just like starting conversation, but with other means. I was like, oh, that's the only one Toto. And she was like, yeah, I, I already have one. And she showed me her Toto. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, like, would you, would you trade for it? Could I, could I get on this machine maybe yeah. and get, because I have six. I told, I have, I have so many of these. I have six. I just need Toto. And she said, no, I want that Toto. And I was like, well, you've already got, I, I'll trade you because we can both get all seven. We can both get like 3,000 tickets. Yeah. I will give you any number of the so, rest of this full set. So she doesn't total. have any other cards. She had a Toto and like a handful of, but so she said, no, she said, no, she only wanted the Toto. And so. <laughs> Dude, gambling just destroys people's brains. I could not convince her. And so I kind of, I was, I was kind of like stalking the area and waiting for her to leave She's so that never I could leave. get the last Toto. That woman was ready to spend a hundred dollars to get that card. So here's what happened is shortly after, like I'm hanging around the coin pusher and the manager came out. Uh, it was me and Nigel and I was holding on to a stupid toy crossbow for him. I had a backpack and Nigel had bought a toy crossbow. It was like, a, like a Nerf gun crossbow. Yeah. And yeah. he didn't even end up taking it with him to Canada, but I was holding on to it all day for him. So sticking out my backpack yeah. and the manager goes, Hey, sorry, like I know you guys aren't causing any trouble actually, but uh, we've gotten a complaint that you're, you've got the crossbow and we got to ask for you to bring it up to the front. And we're like, like we're not kicking you out, but you, you can't be wearing the backpack with the crossbow. And I was like, okay, fine. So like I go up to the front, we like, we talk it out. We like figure out a place to put it in a locker. The lady promises she's going to look after it because it's like all of my stuff in that backpack. We were traveling. And by the time I came back, the yeah. woman was gone. The Toto was gone. And it, it, I had to for half, I was like, did the woman call the manager on me 
so that she could get the Toto away from me in peace. Because now she's yes. got every Toto in Florida and she's gone. She's yeah. left. No. She probably like had to go and get some more money, but she couldn't leave her <laughs> <Yeah>. station. <laughs> So she had to like she call in a, a bomb threat yes. <laughs> that I had the bomb. I think if you take this whole story and you distill it down to the essence, <laughs> you get about 3,000 tickets for the Toto card yes. or if you have the whole yeah. set. And 3,000 tickets just gets you some trash. Yes. This woman was literally fighting you over what turns into like maybe a couple dozen army men and a some candy. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she, I think, I think she wanted, she was feeding off of misery at that point. I think Why do you my think, disappointment yes. was worth more than yes. any number of tickets for her. Yes. What if I told you <laughs> that you can go right now onto eBay? <laughs> no. Yes. And buy a Toto card. <laughs> I will buy every single one. You can, like that card is actually worth less than $30. <laughs> Like it's like twenty bucks. Like that woman mm. spent more money getting the Toto yes. than she could ever get selling it. And she what she really got yes. was making you feel bad. Yes. That yes. was the joy she, she got. She wasn't that after day. the set. No. She was only after keeping Toto out of my hands. I bet you like, she threw that thing in the trash <laughs> she left. Burned it. Yeah. She burned it right after. I think that's the thing. Like people are just as happy losing money if it makes somebody else suffer too oh, that's a that yeah that's like a legitimate study yeah that people do isn't it yeah i don't even think you need a study i think your one piece of evidence is enough to convince <laughs> me that people are petty i mean for christ's sake like you go to the arcade to have fun and there's somebody there who's like trying to interact with you <laughs> already have one like just come on <laughs> the fact the fact too that she she was gone by the time i came back she not only like, she didn't want to play any other games. She got the last Toto, and then she left. You know, like, three years ago, uh, what was Mr. Beast's convention called? What did they call the one? It was near the... Vid Summit. Vid Summit. Vid Summit. Uh, so, Jimmy, after Vid Summit, took a bunch of people to Dave and & Buster's and mm -hmm. gave everybody, like, a, a you know, got a ticket token card with... I don't... It was a bunch. I don't know That's how much awesome. money it was. Yeah. And we got i like what eight thousand tickets some insane number of tickets because there was so much credit on the card uh -huh. and i'm sitting there looking at the prizes and I'm like, i don't want any of this <laughs> shit and so we went and found a kid and just gave him the card that had like eight thousand tickets oh, like, awesome. and i'm like like i don't want any of this stuff like i'm like i don't know i'm here to have fun and i look at any of that stuff and i can just think like that's not gonna i'm not gonna have fun buying this stuff i don't really want candy right now mm -hmm. and i'm gonna just have to oh yeah I'm gonna throw it away. Like I'm gonna whatever I get, I'm throwing away. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want yeah. it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Here, kid. Here's something that I would have been totally stoked as a kid. Someone just handing me oh, a yeah. giant. Oh yeah. Yeah. I guarantee like, the carbon footprint of a Japanese coin pusher yes. versus an American Dave and yeah. Buster. That you nothing. Nothing goes in the garbage no. with a Japanese no. coin pusher. No. It just it's just yeah. value into yep. thin air. That's it's also it. a great value in my yes. opinion. <laughs> like we spent a thousand yen each which is about yeah like, if you do it right if you do it right cents, yes and we coasted on that for two hours. Was two hours it was the price of a matinee yes. ticket and it was better yeah. than most movies i've seen if i could trade prizes for more time on the machine i would do that so it's yeah. like you can either have an hour on the machine oh, and some yeah. shitty prizes or an hour and a half and no prizes give me the hour and a half yeah although sometimes you do get a dog shit run i think like last night a thousand thousand yen got us about half an hour some, it was some, really yeah. it was really yeah. sad we just lost it all when immediately i was on the machine in osaka and i put like i think a thousand yen of coins which was like 10 bucks not, yeah it was like not even seven 10, bucks. 10 bucks i think it was like a couple hundred coins mm -hmm. and i was done in like five or ten minutes and i was i was like pissed <laughs> but then i put a thousand yen in here in shinjuku wherever mm -hmm. we were and i went for like an hour mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. amazing i was oh, like was that osaka where we where we discovered coin the pushers fi Reggie uh, and the I? fish game i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah oh that's right i've been trying right. to remember where that one was yeah the fishing and it's one so, we can't go back you guys rederived the entire game just yes. from like watching a pair of japanese you know, she helped yeah. you too the yeah japanese she helped, helped she showed us oh, how okay, to play like charades. she was putting her own uh, 100 yen 100 into... yen coins into our machine what yes, show us, yes. Like, this to is... show you how to do it because see that's what happens when you know you can't win any prizes you just yeah. <laughs> some of the the coins themselves of the actual medals are like they're like really shitty like 
like Chuck E. Cheese tokens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you put those into the machine, but there's also some of them have a secondary slot for actual money yes. for 100 yeah. yen coins. Yes. Like they're trying to goad you into putting more money in. It works. It, it I works. do it every time. I, every time it asks me, you bet your yeah, ass I put like, 100 yen in. And I that's, think that's how what, you actually, 70 cents or 80 yeah, cents yeah, in the yeah, States? Yeah. Like yeah. that's not, that's like a buck basically. Like that's, I mean, that's, yeah, no. but have you, it doesn't feel like games, it. it costs that much to play like one game of skee ball. That's true. It's like 75 cents. And that's gone like that. Yeah. So and, and some of the machines, the uh, metals machines have just absolute batshit mechanics. Like there's, I don't know how to describe it because I I genuinely don't understand what's going on most of the time. But like they have games within the game and then, like games within those games yes. and it like like the whole thing like there's like a turret like a huge like billboard that will right. rotate and reveal different games to different players. Yes, and. And like if you play that game, then sometimes something else happens. And then the one that that we yeah. found that we like the most, well, there's the fishing one, which is like there's a fishing game within the metals game. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah, and there's like like, uh, like the floats. Upgrading your rod yes. as you're playing coin yes. pusher to yeah. catch bigger and bigger yeah, fish. Yeah, then you can upgrade your hooks too or oh something. My God. <laughs> and fish economy. And then there's the crowning achievement. I feel like people may have seen some Tower of Babel. The tower, oh. the tower of Babel. Did tower you just make that's not what it's called. You're just, it is. It's the tower is it actually of called the Tower of the Babel. The entire game like background is that you're trying to build the Tower of oh, Babel. Okay, well apparently that's religious. Well, well, because when you think about it, because the whole point of the Tower of Babel was they were trying to build a tower to heaven, and then God knocked them down, and that's how everyone couldn't. They got speak. that close. Well, yeah, because that they they he made sure that everyone spoke different languages, and that's oh, okay. sort of the genesis of different languages. How high is heaven? Oh, kilometer. <laughs> they were able to build a tower nearly a kilometer high. Well, the point it is, down, they blamed it on God. Uh, Isn't that the, oh, case? Oh, <laughs> oh, it couldn't have been my shitty construction. It's almost like you're both God and the people at that point because you're trying to build a tower, but you also want to knock it down. <laughs> yes, which is an excellent position to be in. So what you do, and by the way, I have no idea what you actually do, but you do things, and then at some point. The entire pushing, uh, like the what do you call it, like the the, the, push the arm, the push rod, the shelf, yeah, the, the shelf the that shelf. like the the big booty shelf that like pushes yeah. back, that pushes the coins for it completely retracts and reveals this little round hole that builds a coin tower, and then you have to play another game or you have to like put coins in. I yeah. still don't really know how it works. I think that's just designed to get a lot of coins away from you very fast. Yes, yeah, because it's like you have to fight this battle. By I want that. Coins I want it in, though. Like, as fast they think as you can. they think that they're getting and me, each, but they're not. Each, like, <laughs> enjoy it each level of damage you do you you unlock like a hurt new me take my coins. reward so if you put like five coins in no if you put like 50 coins in you get like a five coin reward if you put like you know if you manage to get a hundred in you get 20 coin reward I, I built a really tall tower though i don't really remember how yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mine was the biggest yeah yours is pretty big but then it became a problem because it was yeah. so heavy that, that it couldn't, couldn't push even it push it anymore yeah. <laughs> so you're feeding coins yes what you know, we're going to have to go to a Metals arcade tonight and provide some context for this segment. Cool. Can we film in the Metals? They're going to get mad. We can probably no, cheese yeah, they're it. Definitely gonna what if we just time. cheese it, though? This is a business expense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can buy way more now. Oh. <laughs> we could buy like $100, $10,000 worth of Metals. They let you buy up to 32 million Metals. At that yeah. point, it's got to be credit. It's not yeah, a Yeah, they a can't give you the coins. Because they literally just give you, okay, let's go through the whole experience. <laughs> I mean, all I can think of right now is Metals. <laughs> All right. So imagine this: you walk into an arcade, you go up to like the fourth floor because God forbid they put this on the bottom floor. I think there's something about it that they're ashamed of. So mm -hmm. they push it way up. You walk in, you go to a little, a little machine, a little kiosk and you put your money in and then you, you there's a bunch of buttons and you, it's hard. It's very difficult to figure out which one to push. So you call the employee over and you say uh, a 3000, you say 3000. And then they figure out the sequence of buttons you need to push to get the 3,000 coins um, or three, I guess, 1,500 coins for 3,000. Mm. Then uh, they they like a bucket drops down like a coffee machine, like a coffee vending machine, mm. a big plastic bucket drops. Yeah. And then the, the noise, the greatest noise you've ever heard in your <laughs> life starts happening. Coins, it's like you hit the jackpot. It's, it's like you hit it's the really jackpot. It's really the only time yeah. you'll feel like you won. Yes. And it's just, it's like, it's just raining coins. And it fills the bucket up. It's like 500 coins. And then it stops. And you have to pull it out. And then another bucket drops down. And it is, it's like it is the greatest... Also, I think I've just realized something because it's three thousand. Even because it's you get you get sort of like more coins the more money you put in. Yes. So we would pool it, and so at that one place there's three thousand yen, yeah. fifteen hundred coins. You realize just renting one of those coins is two yen. Two yen. So each of those coins to just have 
for a small amount of time is worth more than a yen. Yes. Like the yen, the physical yen yes. coin is worth less. Is worth less than one of the yes. arcade tokens that you are borrowing Correct. for about an hour. Correct. I feel like the US penny is in a very similar predicament. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why they keep making it. Like it's actually like a conspiracy. It should be a real conspiracy. So why, why do they keep making this shit coin? <gasps> We found the actual shit coin. Turns out the shit coin was, was a real coin all along. <laughs> Join us for our Patreon extra where we eat the weird astronaut food that we bought in J Japan. Have you ever seen Japanese food turn into astronaut ice cream? It's probably going to taste bad.